We've all been there trying to save, haven't we? We go online and try to find ways to improve our finances. Countless hours online trying to find the golden ticket of advice. Advice that promises instant richness. But you do need to be careful because it's not all good advice. Follow your passion is one piece of advice that we hear all the time. And while it may be a good piece of advice, it could actually be detrimental for your finances. This advice tends to simplify the complexity of a successful career. It suggests that whatever you do, if you put passion and if you are passionate about it, it's gonna succeed. Let me tell you that it's not the case. Passion doesn't mean income. And while doing what you want can actually be helpful to make ends meet and even make a career out of it and your work more enjoyable, it doesn't mean that you will make money from it. Let me put you an example. Let's say that your passion is to make some sort of obscure art that there's no market for. You can have all the passion in the world, but if there's no market for this sort of art, you won't be successful. Following your passion often involves a huge amount of risk, from quitting your job, to investing a lot of money on it, or even going back to school just trying to acquire some new skill. These are actually not light decisions, they are not easy decisions to make, and while it may sound fun and you may be extremely excited, it can and it will be detrimental for your financial situation, especially if the moment comes and your passion and your idea that you had in your head doesn't simply pan out. Passion can actually cloud your judgment and lead to poor financial decisions. When we're really passionate about something, it's easy to just overlook all those bad things, that, all the things that could go wrong actually. For example, me with this YouTube channel, I've been doing it for two years, I've invested a huge amount of money on camera, gear, lights, lights on the back and even courses and editing software and perhaps it doesn't pan out but i do have my stable income on the side i do have my career on the side and i'm doing this as a passion as a hobby hopefully to eventually monetize it and make a more living out of it than i'm currently am which is nothing actually waiting to invest until you have enough money a common financial misconception is that you should save enough money to start investing, to start putting everything into the stock market or putting everything, investing it. It is really important to understand that you cannot time the market. It's really difficult to find the perfect moment to invest all of your money or when to put it. So the sooner you start, the more you will have in the future. Because just waiting for the right opportunity can actually make you miss money that you could have otherwise already had invested. The stock market has always been trending up. You will see that if you invest your money early on, that money will exponentially grow. Furthermore, one of these concepts of investing your money is compound interest. This is very and probably the most important concept in finances and investing. Compound interest is when the money earned on an investment is added to the original amount, so that future calculations and earnings are based on the larger amount. It usually works best over long periods of time rather than just short periods of time. It's like an ice hockey stick. It starts slow, it starts slow, it starts slow until eventually it goes up. Did you know that actually Warren Buffett made most of his fortune in the past two three years. To be exact, he made 80% of his wealth in the last two years, just because of compounding. If you start investing at the age of 20 at a 10% interest rate and invest in 50 bucks a week, when you're 25, you'd have $16,879. By the time that you're 30, you have $44,693. By the time that you're 50, you made almost half a million dollars. See how it almost doubles the more you go further in time? That is the power of compound interest. The idea that you should invest only when you have enough, it's an idea that makes you think that investing is for the wealthy, for the people that have money. When in reality, that's not the case. Many investment funds and platforms have really low entry fees, entry investments that you need to make, of, for example, 50 bucks, so you can start even now investing your money. Another risk with in waiting to invest your money is actually inflation. The more you wait and let your money sit in the account, prices will keep on going up, let's say 8% annually, while the interest rate that you're getting when your money is on the bank account is around 2% more or less. 
Thus, that means that there's a 6% difference that you're losing because you're not investing your money. You can't be rich with a 9 to 5. Who says that you cannot build wealth with a 9 to 5? That's a piece of financial advice that is actually more harmful than helpful. It can even lead you to make risky financial decisions with the thought of get money fast, which eventually will just make you lose all your money or it will not be as fast as you would have hoped for. But let me tell you that there's a lot of people that actually got most of their fortune and money just from working a nine to five. Let's look at Richard Reed, for example. He's uh, probably one of my favorite YouTube Wikipedia entries. It says philanthropist, investor, gas station attendant, millionaire, something like that. It's just extremely funny how a guy actually was raised poor, working odd jobs for his whole life and ended up dying with a fortune of $9 million in his bank account. He's one person that has surely, slowly but safely, increased his wealth and his money into generating value. And he probably stuck to a few key principles in personal finance. He probably lived below his means, saved some money, and made smart financial decisions. The journey to wealth is not really about getting rich fast, but it's more a journey that should be about showing discipline, determination, and that you're actually good with money rather than you got lucky with investing all in Bitcoin to say something. And don't forget the regular perks that jobs actually provide, like a cool and fun environment full of hopefully nice people, like my job right now, retirement plan, maybe health insurance discounts, and job stability and security that by the end of the month, you will have a certain amount of money on your bank account and you will be able to live and sleep without stressing. And having a 9 to 5 job doesn't mean that you cannot explore different ways of making money. For example, if you look at probably your favorite YouTubers, let's look at, for example, Ali Afdal. He was a doctor, started a YouTube channel, and then eventually his YouTube channel made him more money than being a doctor. He found more passion in making YouTube videos and helping people that way than in medicine and therefore he quit his job. So don't let this misconception stuck in the 9 to 5 and you will never be rich cloud your thought that you can still be rich. It will just take longer, it will just take more effort, but you can still be rich. College is outdated. The idea that college is outdated can potentially scrub your finances. This advice comes from people that didn't get lucky, but success stories. You don't hear all the people that quit their studies, quit college and eventually didn't make it. You hear all the Bill Gates, the Mark Zuckerbergs, the people that went to school, did something amazing, incredible, quit their studies and eventually moved on. College education actually still plays a significant role in the labor market. It's nearly impossible to get a good well-paying job without having a college degree, having perhaps a master or even having the experience as well to get a job. There is a positive correlation between the amount of money that you earn compared to the level of education you have, meaning that the more you studied during your life, the more you will be paid throughout your life, which eventually will have a direct impact on your savings capacity, making it that you will be able to save more money because you have a higher income, you can live below your means, so then your extra money will just be money that you could potentially invest in yourself, in the stock market, or in different ventures that you wanna have or do. There's also this side of college that you can go and network that's what, for example, MBAs are for. People go there, they network, and they get jobs thanks to people they met during their post-grad studies. Without a job, you might actually find yourself limited in the job search and you will struggle to get a job. It is really important to know that college does come with quite a big cost and the student loan can actually be a, bur a burden for your financial situation. However, looking at college through the lens that it's expensive, you need a lot of money for it, kind of misses the purpose and clouds the vision into the long-term vision that it can have. If you go to college, if you plot it against how much you would earn if you just worked a nine to five without having gone to college versus going to college and even doing postgrad, the amount of money, I think it even quadruples. However, carefully planning and choosing a field of studies like software engineer, finances that had a high demand, 
can actually help you in your career, in your life and in your financial situation. Student loans can be paid back easily with a degree. This idea that student debts can be paid well, simply by having a college degree, it's dangerous. It really implies that whatever you study, if you go to college, you will make a lot of money and you will be able to pay your debts really fast, which is wrong. That's entirely not correct. And there are two very simple ways to look at this. First, not all degrees are equal in terms of potential earnings. While some fields tend to lead to high payable jobs, others may not. For instance, a job degree in computer science or engineering might lead to a high paying job right out of college let's say, per a year, allowing a fresh graduate to pay off their loans relatively quickly. However, a degree in social sciences or arts might not provide the same immediate financial return, probably half of the 100k a year. Basically, the ability to pay back your loan depends widely on what you study. The second point, the job market is quite unpredictable. Economic downturns, industry shifts and other factors can impact job ability, availability and salaries. Not so long ago, you saw how Tesla cut 10% of their workforce or even Twitter fired like half of their employees. Again, you damn Elon Musk. Just because you have a degree doesn't mean you'll immediately land a high paying job or any job for that matter. And as time goes by, the cost of studying is incredibly going higher. A public college degree in the US was around $3,000 in the year 2000. However, if you compare it to just about two years ago, it was $10,000 per year. That means that the cost more or less tripled, a little bit more than tripled. For comparison, in 2022, the average salary was 77,000, while in the year 2000, it was around 50,000, meaning that the salaries only increased by around 30%. And while a degree can certainly help you in your financial journey and your financial decisions, you need to be careful of what you're gonna study, the pros and cons of each study, future employment, because while you might get the education, eventually you might not be able to pay it back, especially in the US. It's not as easy as get a degree, you'll pay your loans back. You only live once. The YOLO mentality often leads to reckless spending and poor financial decisions under the name that you need to live your life to the fullest. While it is crucial to enjoy your life and make the most of our time, it's equally important to ensure that we are financially secure and prepared for our future. Adopting this mindset can lead to impulsive buying decisions. Instead of saving or investing, one might spend money on expensive things or items that are perhaps not needed and they actually do not provide long-term value. This could be anything from luxury cars, high-end gadgets, to expensive vacations and designer's clothes. These purchases can easily turn your savings into crumbles. This mentality also disregards the importance of financial planning. Promotes the idea that since we only live once, we should enjoy our money now without much thought for the future. This can lead to eventually not having retirement plans, no emergency funding against your car breaks down like mine did last week and no financial cushion for unexpected expenses whatsoever. I'm really of the belief that our 20s is the time that we should go on and have fun, explore the world, financial mistakes, stupid mistakes also and learn and besides that have fun but this doesn't really disregard the idea that we should really just save money and have the money in case of emergency and think of the future and get the money for the future it is really not excuse to just buy a playstation 5 or buy a car or buy something that you don't need just to impress someone that eventually won't be there in five years. It does not mean that. Be conscious of your finances, be conscious of your decisions and be conscious of your future self. That you can afford it doesn't mean you should. The idea that if you can afford it, you should buy it is extremely dangerous. It is of the idea that everything you have, you should spend it and you should use it. Probably the biggest example of this is getting a mortgage. Let's say that the bank allows you for half a million dollars. It's extremely tempting to go out and go on the hunt for a house. However, this potentially means that you need to pay $2,500 a month, leaving you with less money for other sort of expenses. By choosing for a more affordable house, for example, 300,000, your payments could be as much lower as 1,500, leaving 1,000 euros 
further expenses, that further savings that you could have. Just because you have the funds to purchase something doesn't mean you have to. And it doesn't mean that it's the best use for your money either. It is important that the next time you listen to any financial creator, you evaluate their advice and listen carefully. Starting with this one. Not every advice applies for everyone the same way.